here at the grapple. Got my valve in. I'll show you that here in a second. Right now, we're gonna take these old hoses loose, put the new ones on, run them through here, see where we can put that valve. Here is the before. We got four hoses running the whole length here. This cylinder here is not even hooked up because I don't have a I don't have two remote valves out here. So I just run the grapple, and then if I need to turn it, I bump this end up against the stack of hay or something. It's not that hard to spin, but it sure would be nice to be able to hit a switch, spin it how you want it, and stop it where you want it, switch it to the other way, and it would stay there and not move around all over the place. So this is the before. This is the after. So we've moved inside because it's dark out. Um, took all this extra hose out of here. Put all new hoses in, put a uh, five footer here and a four footer, and then these are both six footers. And I was gonna put 90s here. I didn't have 90s anyways, but I changed my mind because this is one more fitting to leak. So I just brought them out here and sweeped them in, swept them in. Uh, they're not out past this here, so I don't have to worry about them getting knocked off or anything like that. This is where I really want the 90s, so these pieces aren't sticking up here like this. Now, the only thing left to do on this, uh, I do need to tighten my bolts down, but uh, I need to hook, hook, wire me a cord up. And what I'd like to do, my ideal scenario, would be to determine which one of these pins is ground and which one is 12 volt, and get me a plug, which I'm sure a plug's not cheap, uh, but I don't know, we'll see there and just be able to hook hook this right into there and use my existing controls in the cab of the skid steer that way there's no cobbling or any of that stuff don't have to add a switch or anything like that that's my hope that's my plan we'll see if that happens um so what i did here is i took quarter inch bolts by three inch i believe i think they're three inch and I welded them to the frame here, and I just bolted this piece down. Very, very simple. Uh, she's rigid, and of course, I don't actually have the cylinder hooked up right now because I don't have this working. So I'm not worried about hooking that up until I have that completely working. Do you remember me discussing the issues with the squeeze? Issues with the squeeze, actually there's one big issue, and that is I bent my arms, which, I 75% expected, I 100% hoped it wouldn't, but I should have just went with my calculations and my brain and planned for that. But I used what I had, I at least proved the concept, it will work, it does work. It'll work much better once I have these reinforced and I don't have to worry about trying to take it easy and not bend them. So in designing this, I don't wanna give away all my trade secrets or anything, <laughs> Uh, like I got trade secrets, but you uh, you can probably tell it's not super square. It's not supposed to be square. I call it toe. The ends of these bar arms are towed in, so that means this distance here is greater than this distance here. And what that does is, whenever you go to squeeze, um, since you have such a big lever arm here, this is going to flex. It's basically acting like a big spring. Okay, if you have this perfectly straight, by the time this flexes, you don't have any squeeze on these, this outer row of bales. With it angled in, and, it, and whenever it flexes, now you've got some tension on these, this outer row of bales by the time you squeeze these inner rows tight enough to pick it up. That worked really good. The issue is, uh, C-channel is very weak in the, oh gosh, Z axis, I, I, whatever axis I'm using here. They're very weak going this way and this way. Very weak. Very strong going this way and this way, as long as you can hold them from twisting and everything. Okay, so you can see, uh, I straightened these up a while back. You see my heat marks there? That's right where it bent. It bent right after my brace that I put in here. I verbally explained this before, but now I'm gonna show you because I think a lot of people um, misunderstand mechanical properties and, and 
the best way to brace something, okay? So let, let's, let's go over this really quick. Most people, I, 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 at least I think most people, believe that if you want to reinforce this for bending this way, let's just say this is just the, the flange of an I-beam, okay? Let's just say it's a flat piece of steel, okay? Most people would think, okay, I'm going to put it in here, and that's going to that's gonna really reinforce that. And it is. It is going to reinforce it. However, um, let's look at this in a different way, okay? Let's look at this like an I-beam. Make believe this is an I-beam. This upright piece that you see right here, that's the web. This is a flange. This is a flange. I'm going to do a little quiz here. What part of this beam carries the most load? Where's the strength of the beam at? Your possible answers are the web, this piece here, the flange. Uh, that's really about it. <laughs> uh, I mean, you could say one flange or the other, but I mean, it uh, depends on how the load is, I guess. But let's just say that the load's centered on the beam and all that good stuff. Does your strength come from the web or the flange? A do, 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 do. Okay, fast forward to the song and ding, ding, ding. The answer is the flange. The two flanges are where your strength is, okay? The web has like virtually no strength compared to the flanges. Okay, the web's sole purpose is to hold the flanges apart and rigid. So just think of it this way. If you took the flange out, you just had these two pieces of flat steel here, like this, and you just attach them at each end, they're gonna be really floppy here, okay? And they're gonna kink and bow and everything. With the web in place, they are one piece together and that keeps them from kinking and bowing, or however you want to say it, okay? However, the web does not provide the strength. The flanges are what provide the strength. And the reason is, uh, you have zero stress right in the center, which is gonna be at the center of this, web, this uh, web area, okay? As you move away from there, that's where your stresses are. So your stresses are the highest way up here where your steel is the thickest and the, the, the strongest, okay? So let's say this is a beam. This is the top flange. This is the bottom flange. And you're loaded up here where my hand is. The top flange is gonna be a negative mo uh, moment. The bottom flange is gonna be a positive moment. That means this is gonna be in compression. This is in tension. The wider and thicker these two flanges are, the stronger this beam is. You can hold the, the, the web the same as long as it's strong enough to not just rip apart. It's going to be much stronger increasing here and here, okay? So, if you increase the web, you're not really gaining anything except for weight because... Your, your flange is not very, you don't have much material away from the, from the center of the beam, okay? So if you put all your material right here in the center of the web, you're gaining no strength whatsoever, period. The further you add material from that zero moment mark, the stronger your beam is, just like a just like a pipe or a piece of tubing or a drive shaft. So, any drive shaft on a truck, on a car, whatever, is if you look at older vehicles, they're a lot smaller, and the walls are thicker or they're solid. On newer vehicles or newer trucks, a lot of times you can look under a newer truck, and that drive shaft is like massive. Okay but it's actually lighter because they took less material and put it further away from the center, okay, and made that stronger. Now, same goes holds true with an I-beam. So, what we're going to do, we're gonna make a makeshift I-beam, basically, 
and I'm going, because I don't have enough material to do it, I'm going to take, I'm not gonna use this piece, but this is an example. I'm gonna take, say, strips of this, or whatever. We're gonna lay in here in the middle. We're gonna weld it in, okay? Once we're done doing that, we're gonna take this piece of half inch by four inch bar stock, and we're gonna lay it like this, okay? So this is gonna be like a flange, the outside of this C channel is gonna be like a flange, and this piece I add in here is gonna be the web. All I need to do is add enough pieces in there close enough together that I don't have, that I am spanning a short enough distance between them that my flange isn't bowing in or bowing out or kinking or whatever you wanna call it. So that's how I'm gonna reinforce this. I know probably a lot of people are thinking you need to put something, you know, on edge down here. And that would reinforce it, but we're gonna do one step better and we're gonna lay one like this, okay? Because that, that puts a lot of material out here away from the center, okay? So if you add everything right here in the center, uh, you're, you're gaining very little strength. And I don't mean center this way, I'm talking center this way, okay? So the further out here you could add that, let's say we could add it over here, that would make that really, really strong. The problem with that is then we lose our, our, our spacing here. We don't want that. I think I kind of got long-winded there, but I wanted to explain to you guys a little bit about that. Um, there's, I'm sure there's better ways of explaining it, but that's what I have right here, and I was thinking about it, so I wanted to show that to you. So once we get that done, I have full intentions of using this, we're gonna use this in conjunction with this. I fully believe each of these pieces has a place, okay? They're both gonna have strengths, they're both gonna have weaknesses. For instance, a weakness of the grapple is how high you can reach with this grapple. Now I know they have high lift grapples and all that stuff, but for this one here, I can reach basically 10 feet, and that's about it, maybe a little more. Seven layers on edge. This, I can pick up multiple layers, which means that I can reach higher and stack higher. This is much heavier than this. Now looking at this, I got a lot going on here. Very little going on out here. So if you, if you, if you think about it, basically the pivot point's gonna be, I don't know, right here, about here where the pins are. So most of my weight is really, really close to the pivot point. Now, when you add hay, you're getting out here, you know, say six, six and a half feet out at the furthest. So the center is going to be, say, three, three foot, two or three inches. Okay. But on this one, most of our weight is centered on this pin right here. Don't get me wrong. There's a bunch of weight here. But for the most part, this thing here is where your weight is. And we are probably, I don't know, eight feet out from here. So all my weight maybe not quite eight, at least six feet out from, from, from here. So all my weight is centered. Whenever I pick up a group of hay, it's centered on this pen right out here, okay? I pick up 10 bales with this. This 8,000 pound machine is very light in the, in the back end. I, this thing, I, I, I haven't picked up a whole, whole bunch with it, but I know that Picking up two layers, which is 20 bales, feels about equivalent to this with no bales. Just the attachment. So, this thing here is much lighter, much easier on your equipment, all that good stuff. Now, one pro for this is whenever I'm stacking on the trailer with this thing, I can push those bales up really tight together and I can still grab them off the trailer because I'm grabbing them from the top. This thing, if I load it on the trailer and, you know, I pull out, I can push them really tight, but if they're really tight, I can't get them off the trailer because I can't squeeze this arm in between two bells that are like this, okay? I need a space at least to get it started. The other benefit of this one is I can tie bales. And what I mean by that, I don't mean like tie a string around it. I mean, with this being able to rotate, I can put one layer like this and the next layer like this. One layer, next layer. That, for being on the trailer, that is the ticket, I'm telling you. That last load I loaded was this thing here. You cannot do that. 
You cannot squeeze bales end to end. If you could, then you this that you could actually tie with this thing. You just grab it a different way. Now I have thought of a way to modify this. Basically, put a pivoting hitch, and I would pin it over here, basically, and put another cylinder where it would pivot 90 degrees, and then you just pick up, you know, a group of hay right here, and that would allow you to be able to turn that and be able to tie. Honestly. That's probably the biggest downfall to the squeeze is um, if you want to stack your bales really tight, you're not going to be able to get in there with this to get them back out. Now, as long like, you know, if you're leaving a little bit of space between your, your grabs, you can grab them with this. You know, you don't have to leave a little bunch, you know, three inches. And that's, that's really acceptable in the barn. But on a trailer, I think you want them as tight as possible if you're going any distance. Now, if you're just hauling from the field to your barn in the same place, then, you know, leaving a gap is not a big deal. Um, but for actually going down the road, 30, 40, 50 miles, down the interstate, whatever, you need them tight. You need them stacked really well so they ride good. You don't have to worry about them falling off. Anyways, rambled on enough. I'm going in. Good night, guys. God bless you. God bless America. Franklin County Forge out.